Maybe I'll put on my glasses. Recording in progress. Okay. Um, just waiting. A few people are still connecting. The public is signing in. Okay. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our Cheltenham Commissioner meetings. Before we start the Public Safety Committee meeting, before Commissioner Brockington starts that meeting, uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, the board met in executive session prior to this evening's public meeting to discuss uh, personnel issues and legal issues and agency business, which if discussed in public would violate a lawful privilege. With that uh, statement out of the way, uh, Commissioner Brockington, why don't you start off with public safety? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to call the public safety meeting for tonight, Wednesday, February 9th. 2022 to order. And the first uh, item on the agenda will be a report from our police chief, Chief Slavin. Welcome. Uh, chief, you're on mute. Sorry about that. You got me now? Yes, we got you. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first item, make, uh, police clearance of juvenile contact reports for the month of December of 2021. Um, and see your attachment for that. Any questions? Uh, yeah. yeah, before I, I, I do have a question. Um, are we seeing some residual from what's going on over in Philly? I noticed that like armed robberies seem to be up um, and things like that and theft. And just, I guess I won't, I'm not going to call them petty crimes because a crime is a crime. But I, I just noticed that there was a lot of activity um, in, along that range. Can you speak to that at all? Yes, sir. Um, obviously, we're, we're, our border, we border in Philadelphia. We're going to see some uh, bleed over into our town. Which we, um, for the month of December, we saw five armed robberies, um, which was, uh, you know, obviously an increase over the, the December prior. Um, some of them were uh, strong armed robberies. Some of them were pointed gun robberies. Um, and in addition to that, we also saw a group of thefts. We talked about the theft from autos we were seeing um, and the theft from uh, motor vehicles as well. Uh, during that time in December. Um, in addition to the thefts, the retail thefts that time of year, again, in December were also increased uh, uh, significantly. Um, I, but I think that has to do with the time of year um, with that then. The violent crime, like anything else, um, we're not seeing the numbers, thank God, that the city is seeing, um, but it's always a concern uh, for us. And occasionally we do get bleed over in there. Um, it just gives me great concern when you see the number of carjackings and stuff out there that's, that's taking place now. And just the uh, disregard for life, really. It's very scary, very scary out there. Um, but unfortunately, to answer your question, Commissioner, we, do, we did have uh, a couple incidents in December reported, serious incidents like the armed robberies reported in there. Uh, but for the most part, our crime is still uh, at a manageable level. Um, any crime is, is concerning. But uh, as far as that, compared to the city of Philadelphia, we're not seeing that type of, uh, that type of uh, instance. Thank you. Commissioner Norris? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so following up on that, uh, just a, not a question, but just a uh, statement, uh, particularly for uh, any residents who are listening. Um, uh, if you compare 2021 to the prior year, 2020, our crime was, our crime in Cheltenham overall was down significantly. Uh, so whereas the chief did just comment on, um, unfortunately, armed robbery was an exception to that. That was up for the year. Uh, but significant items, burglary, theft, um, and numerous other categories, uh, crime was down substantially from the prior year. Um, in addition to that, uh, we can be thankful also that auto accidents were down sharply in 2021 from the prior year. That's correct. I sir. just thought I'd point those items out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other comments or questions from commissioners in reference to the report? All right, hearing none, uh, wait, I call. Wait. I'm sorry, Commissioner Rappaport. I'm sorry, and I don't mean this to be argumentative or to be negative, but uh, maybe autumn, uh, the, the crashes were down, but there were more vehicles and more injuries this past year. So I, I think that you don't want to be misleading about that. 
Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. You are correct. Thank you. All right, I'm calling for the approval of item 1A. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We're going to move on to item 1B, which is an update on the um, horrible accident that took place on January 23rd on Greenwood Avenue. Chief or yes, Sergeant Mr. Tyler? I just wanted to give a brief update uh, regarding the accident. Um, this is a very traumatic uh, event, not only for uh, emergency responders, the police, the ambulance, the um, uh, emergency medical services and the fire department that responded, but also the neighbors that were in the 400 block of Greenwood Avenue at 1 a.m. on the 23rd. Um, this was really a traumatic incident for all involved in this, and certainly the families involved. My heart goes out to those families involved. As I uh, corresponded with all of you, this is a parent's worst, worst nightmare. Um, and uh, something that no, no parent wants to deal with. Um, we had uh, five teenagers in their late teens involved in this accident. Unfortunately, uh, one 19-year-old young man, uh, Nicholas Bednarik, uh, had, had uh, succumbed to injuries and passed away as a result of this accident. Um, I've seen a couple of posts on, on the social media regarding the accident, and I just wanted to let everybody know this is an ongoing investigation with the Montgomery County District Attorney's Office currently. Um, we're looking at all the factors and causes to our accident, and there's, there's several causes and factors to this accident, and we're investigating them thoroughly. Once that information has been garnered and a decision has been made, the district attorney will make an, a joint announcement on, on where, where we go with this investigation. But I just want everybody to know this is a very serious incident. It's affected our community. It's affected our emergency service personnel in our department here. I just wanted to let you know that this is ongoing investigation. Uh, we have investigators assigned to this, and we're going to... Uh, continue to investigate this till we have all the information we need. Um, I had spoke to the investigator involved in this. Uh, he has spoken to the family. He's been in contact with the families involved. Um, we had actually, thank, thankfully, all are on the mend and doing better. Um, they, they still have a road to go. All of them have had multiple surgeries, um, and they still have some additional surgeries pending in the future. But thankfully, they're on the road to improvement. Um, that's, the, that's the word we're getting from the families now. Now, one last thing on that. I just want to let you know we received a letter uh, from a family uh, that had a uh, grandson involved in the crash. And uh, the family wanted to thank us for the compassion and care that our police, our emergency medical personnel, and our fire department uh, displayed and gave their loved ones that were involved in this accident. Um, in the letter, as I shared with all of you, um, they, they mentioned our, our compassion and caring that, that our personnel gave. And I'm very proud of our personnel for the way they responded to this incident. As I said, um, it's a very tragic incident all around, even for us. Um, this is a, is a very difficult incident. So to have them reach out to us, I thought was really, really something. And I was really taken touch back by that. And I shared that with our officers and I shared personally with the officers that responded that night and thanked them for their efforts that night and putting uh, you know, the best face forward on this with, 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 the, with the families in there, but also doing their job with exactly how I expect them to do it to the best of their ability in a difficult situation. So I'm very proud of them for that. Um, we'll have more comment on, 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 uh, uh, the traffic study and the traffic services uh, during the public comment, but I wanted to address that particular issue because I saw a few comments regarding that on social media. Thank you, Chief. Any comments from the commissioners on item 1B? I, I'm going to take the liberty to open item 1B up to residents. Um, I will do it now. Um, but I will ask residents to please if, try to keep your comments, as, you know, concise because we do have a long agenda and I don't want to wait until the end. Um, I want to give you guys the utmost respect that you deserve since this is item, this is here now. So um, we'll start with Teresa. And this is only related to the Greenwood Avenue um, fatal accident. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh... you. Chief Slavin, um, we do have a list of questions that we can move through quickly with different items. So we're not gonna be repetitive. Uh, we were just curious as to what the make and model of the car was. It was a 2006 Honda Civic. 2006 Honda Civic, okay. Yes, it was a uh, standard model. Uh, no turbocharge, no additional thing. This is standard Honda Civic. Thank you. And uh, we were concerned about the condition of the injured, so we appreciate the report on that. And we did see that the big sign went up 
uh, at Hedgerow, so we appreciate that. Thank you. And um, I think that would be a useful tool in the future. Uh, I guess we still don't know the how this happened, but we have been concerned as to why it happened because we've been very concerned about that uh, incline for quite a while. So I guess what uh, we can save some questions for future yeah. and uh, see what precautions need to be taken to prevent it. Anything future happening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Are there any other comments in reference to item 1B? Herb, I'm here. This is Mika Augustine. I'm sorry, I cannot oh. figure out for the life of me how to raise my hand. That's okay. Go ahead, Mika. Thank you so much. Um, and yes, Herb, thank you so much for um, giving us the opportunity to not have to wait all the way to the end of the meeting for Citizens Forum. And um, as, as I'm sure several of you know, this was in front of our home where this took place. And it was very traumatic. And, um, you know, it was just the nail on the head. Um, it's been really frustrating um, to just ask for advocacy and ask for changes, but yet it just doesn't seem like anything's happening, at least not, not fast enough um, in order to avoid something else like this happening again. And as you know, there was a very serious near fatal accident in October and it is not the first, we've been here 23 years. And though it's not all of the time, thank goodness. Um, it's just, you know, that incline coming down onto the bridge, it's blind. So my question to all of you is, what needs to happen in order for immediate implementation of changes that will benefit those of us in this community? What does it, what will it take for us to get things that have been approved by PennDOT, things like signage, um, permanent signage, things like signs that show that there are hidden driveways. And yes, that's not going to necessarily make a huge impact on the way people drive. We've spoken about people's unfortunate bad driving habits, but it can't hurt. Um, so, you know, we're still waiting for traffic studies and it's just the ongoing waiting and waiting and nothing is happening. What happened to the sign that's been brought up so often about a welcome to our community for those drivers who are cutting through our community coming off of 309 saying this is a quiet community, please respect the, the, you know, speed limits and that type of thing. I think you know, those are items that are important and that really would make a difference or could make a difference. But we keep talking about these things. We keep going in circles. Nothing is happening. So can you please tell us what can be done right away? Mika, um, you know, we've, we've discussed this a lot, uh, even in traffic calming. And I always say the thing you hate to hear when it comes to Greenwood. And, you know, and unfortunately, it, that's the issue. And I think Bob can speak to um, when will we get that report that we're waiting from, from PennDOT. We have to get that to be able to make a change on their street. And no, I, I, get your, I get your frustration. Okay. I totally do. But Bob, is, I know it came up, I think, last Wednesday. Was there any movement on getting that final report from PennDOT and on the changes that we can make. You're on, you're on mute, Bob. Uh, um, maybe I can broadly answer the question. Uh, in the roughly 17 months mm -hmm. I've been here, I've, I've never seen PennDOT move this quickly um, or any state agency, uh, the Department of Transportation uh, because of the efforts of all of you, this board of commissioners that have been pushing on our legislators, the police department to where we are anticipating this report by mid, mid to late February. Uh, they've promised us that. They have put special attention on Greenwood, especially in the area of the accident. Um, they are moving at light speed. I know it's, you don't want to hear that, but 
from my experience, they are moving at a tremendous rate. Um, as you know, they're completing their other study on the widening of the road at Church and Greenwood as well. Mm -hmm. um, there are a multitude of challenges in trying to address all these issues of concern, not only on Greenwood Church, but everywhere throughout the township. And I think for us not to have to pay for this study, because originally, if you recall back probably a year ago, PennDOT was saying, well, the township can pay for this study. And they took this on themselves. So, um, you know, I look for that. Uh, Commissioner Pransky made a call to the county commissioner, which then within hours, their assistant director of planning called and said, we're on board with you. We're going to look, we're going to help. Uh, they're looking for that report because that is the basis for us to move forward on. Um, I know PennDOT gave a long laundry list of things to say, here's what you can do. Um, sure, we could go ahead and do that, but if the study comes out and says, well, this is completely wrong, I don't think we want to spend the money twice. Plus, some of those items that are in there, in my opinion, is window dressing. It makes it look good, but is it going to have the real impact that we want in slowing and controlling traffic? And that's where, you know, I have high hopes uh, that this study is going to give us the roadmap of where to go for where we can pay for this to where the county can help help out and to the state. So I think we're, we're coming together in the perfect world of all this effort, all this work. I know the police department is continuing to work on this to look at all the options they can uh, because of your voices of what you've done. So as soon as that report hits my email, it's going to go to everybody right away to all the different groups, all the different people to look at. And my guess is that next month in Herb's committee, probably at this meeting, we can take a step through all of that entire report of where we're going to go. Yeah. Well, if, if I may, please, um, I, I appreciate that. And um, thank you for addressing that to us. But I think my the reason I bring some of these items up, if please correct me if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, some of these things that I'm mentioning were okay for the township to do without waiting for PennDOT approval, things like some of the signage, things like some of the road painting. Um, so those are the things that I'm referring to. I realize that you know, there, there is an importance in finding out, you know, the findings of the study, but some of these other things that seem that I thought were up to the township themselves to implement that didn't have to wait for the full study. Am I incorrect? They still have to approve all these and some of the improvements would require warrants uh, by that would have to be issued by the state. So, um, Again, it's one that here's a here's a roadmap, I think, of what they laid out to us to show that they're willing to work with us. I think we need something specific and concrete now to make these permanent improvements because we don't want to revisit this. I don't think anybody wants to keep revisiting this year after year after year. I think we want to put an end to it. We want to put a plan together that we can put in front of the board for them to consider funding. There is monies that sit out there, and I think Commissioner Zygmuntfeld has been all over you know, the, uh, the relief money that's come from the federal government that's at the state level for the county. So this is a tremendous opportunity for us where we could look at external funds to help fund this. But there isn't one person that's on this call uh, here from the township that doesn't wanna see this take place and get done the right way. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mika, Mika, can I go on to co yes. Commissioner Pransky? Yes, Thanks, thank Mika. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Pransky? Yeah, uh, just a brief follow up. Um, this is staying on the front burner, as Bob was saying. Um, I had a 45 minute call today with Congresswoman Dean's chief of staff. Uh, they have some upcoming webinars for us and one of them will focus on transportation. And I expressed to them that one of the difficulties we have is state road intersecting with local roads, state road like 73 running through our township. And the fact is we can only push Harrisburg so hard and it will be helpful occasionally if possibly the Congresswoman uh, got involved just to drop less than subtle hints about how we need to move this forward. Um, so I have, I, I was just adding one more layer sort of to put pressure on this. And I think, I think we, we're, we will be seeing some improvement in movement fairly soon. Thank you, Commissioner Pransky. Commissioner Rappaport, did I see your hand up? 
I'm just going to, I see three other hands up. Let's okay. keep going with them. All right, I'm going to go with Miss Moore first. Miss Moore, Linda. And then, and then Emily, it's you. And then Tom, you'll be next. We'll go in that order. Um, thank you. I can, let's see, I guess I should at least take my um, Thank you very much. Uh, I have a, just one real question that has to do with how all these issues come together uh, with an overlay of, I understand that there's a traffic engineering firm that the township has retained. Um, what are they, are they doing something? Are they part of the study? Um, will they be involved in whatever it is that, that ultimately can be done uh, about all of these uh, traffic concerns? And I just wanted to double check that the, the business of widening church and Greenwood is being looked at in the context of the overall traffic issues, both accidents and speeding and, and heavy traffic volume cutting through. Um, the, is the PennDOT study going to, to um, sort of analyze all of that together and in, in context? So two questions. Sure, well, go ahead, go ahead, Bob. Um, yes, that includes uh, PennDOT, what no, we've does. been told. We are anticipating getting all that information from them as part of the study. Mm -hmm. um, the engineering firm that the township has retained, they are not involved at this point. As soon as that study hits us, that's when they become engaged. Uh, as well to be able to look at this and then to assist the township or maybe there is are issues that we want to see done and PennDOT may not see it, that they uh, work with PennDOT, they have experience with them to help push our agenda forward and what we want to see and get done. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Thank and you. Just, just, to, um, just to add to that, Linda, when we ask them to expand the scope of the research, we ask them to expand it up to uh, Greenwood and 309, up to um, Church and Rice's Mill, down to Church and Washington Lane, and then down Greenwood to, uh, I think it was Shelton Hills. Um, so sort of all four points, you know, coming off of that major intersection. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Holling. We're gonna go right, and Emily's said, um, we can go with Tommy. Tommy, you can go next. Okay, thanks. So, Tom, Tom Nolan? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when this uh, PennDOT traffic study is completed and available, will there be a special community meeting where the neighbors can go, can go over the results? And um, we can, I'm okay meeting? with, uh, you know, as chair of public safety, I'm okay with having a special meeting yeah. Um, and I know my commissioner is going to throw stuff at me as we don't have enough, but I'm OK with having a special meeting that just addressing that. And, and I think that that would be something that would make sense to me. Um, and just having people who are interested in that particular study, we can put it up on the screen. We can kind of go through it. Um, Bob, we, we, let's make that happen. Let's we make can, it a public meeting. We can do that. And if you'd like, we can make it uh one of the hybrid meetings where we could get together at Curtis Hall and then also have it via Zoom. So if people want to be there to see drop maps or anything else it's firsthand, they can see that yeah. as well. Uh, Excellent. Uh, I see what you're doing, Bob. You want me okay. to drive on Greenwood before I come to that meeting, to, before we talk about us, Greenwood. All of us to go there, yes. Uh, I see Bob, what you're trying Bob, to do. Just saying, Bob, just seeing that we have the capability there of displaying anything over Zoom that's being shown in the room. Perfect. Yeah. So maybe we can kind of do that. Thanks, Tom. That's good. Yeah. Emily, you have the last word. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, very, very sad news about the the crash, and but unfortunately, very uh, predictable. And um, I don't think it's going to be the last of it. Um, so I, I would like to echo what Mika said. Perhaps we could bring up the discussion again of the signs at the gate ways into the community that say, please respect our, um, you know, our safety. We, we want to look out for our kids, look out. We are, we are a community here. Um, please respect our speed limits. And I think having 
kind of gateway um, signage saying that would be pretty helpful. Um, and the other thing is that, the other thing is that I, I just wanna keep reiterating and I know I'm preaching pretty much to the choir here, but um, every time I go to Washington Avenue, there's no traffic there. And I just don't understand why they're continuing to force. It's like forcing blood through a vein that's too small. And there's a vein right down the road that can accommodate everything. So that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. So Emily right, wants bypass surgery, huh? <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to move on. because This doesn't need to be voted on or anything like that. We're going to move on to item 1C, which is to recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order to Devo and Associates LLC in the amount of $2,649.88 for the modem kits for the parking kiosk. Um, and the invoice is attached. Are there any questions? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, so perhaps this is for our police chief. Chief, um, yes, it is. My question refers to actually uh, C, D, E, and um, yeah, C, D, and E, I think. Uh, okay. And that is, are, uh, are any of these items eligible to be paid from the forfeiture account? I'd have to look that, at that, Commissioner, since we already budget for uniforms. I don't believe we can use that, those funds for that. It's already a budgeted item. The asset forfeiture funds is to extend our budget as well um, with the guidelines. I'd have to look closely at the guideline um, for the new officers, possibly. Um, but I know the other is our regular, it's our regular um, purchase order request for our uniform allowance for the year for our officers. So that's something we have budgeted in the past for the for the last 30 years that I've been aware of. Um, as far as the modems go, I'm not sure if that's something that would, would cover. I'd have to look at the exact wording on that. The wording has to benefit the police department directly um, and or public safety in that end of it. Um, I would have to look at the wording again to see if that would fit. My gut says, no, that part would not fit. The uniform part, I might be able to look at that and see if that could fit, to be honest with you, the new officers. But uh, as far as the other goes, oh, wow. the larger of the two, I think would be um, something we already budgeted for. So I don't believe that would be, we can't replace that. Okay. So for the, for the new unit, for the new officers, um, and frankly, for, as we go through the year, if there are any of these expenses that are coming up, I want to encourage that, uh, we consider the forfeiture account instead of our regular operating budget. I can go over with the manager on that again, whenever, whenever something comes up. I can meet with them prior, however you want to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief. So item 1C, I'm calling for the approval of item 1C. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. On to item 1D, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order to Chris Boyle. Law. Can everyone put themselves on mute if you can? Allison, can you put everyone on mute? Thank you, guys. Uh, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the purchase order to Chris Boyle Law Enforcement Consulting LLC in the amount of $5,841 for the 2022 monthly case law update membership renewal. The chief, give us a little explanation for one day. Yes, sir. If I could just refer to uh, Lieutenant Snyder. Could oh, you comment on the Lieutenant uh, Snyder. Thank you, Lieutenant Snyder. Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yes, we can. So, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, Chris Boyle uh, is an attorney that was with Marshall Dennehy for uh, quite a number of years, represented the township in a number of civil suits successfully. Uh, he left Marshall Dennehy and created his own company uh, that is law enforcement consulting. Uh, he has brought on about 50 to 60 th uh, departments in southeastern Pennsylvania to receive this monthly uh, uh, legal update that covers uh, cases out of the Pennsylvania courts, uh, the Third Circuit, which covers southeastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey of the federal system, as well as the U.S. Supreme Court. And it's all cases that are relevant to law enforcement, both civil and criminal. Um, from a civil liability standpoint, it can't be beat. It's explaining to our officers, you know, the letter of the law, the way the courts are ruling, you know, best practices for us on the street. And it will absolutely assist us uh, in, in reducing our civil liability. 
Uh, the cost breaks down to just under $9 a month per officer. Uh, we receive the update by email. Uh, we import that into our Power DMS system, which is how all of our documents are distributed. As part of that, there's a 10 question quiz every month that every officer has to complete, showing that they actually did complete the training. Uh, and from a, from a cost perspective, uh, it, 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 it really has a huge impact on our officers. Uh, back in November, uh, we conducted a department wide survey uh, asking our officers where they felt their training was lacking. And nearly half the officers felt that their training was lacking specifically in this category. Uh, they felt they weren't uh, being updated on uh, the way the courts are ruling both on criminal and civil cases. So this kind of, the timing of this kind of worked out perfectly. Um, you know, the officers were feeling they weren't receiving adequate training in this, and this just happened to pop up right at that time. Um, so for that reason is why we're, we're putting this forward for approval. Thank you, Lieutenant Snyder. Mr. Commissioner Chairman. Armin. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, Lieutenant Snyder, Chief Slavin, uh, thank you for bringing this back. I, I know that I was one of the ones who raised uh, the possibility of trying to find maybe some cost savings related to this when it was brought up last month. Um, the, 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 it's, it appears that those cost savings are not available by sort of limiting it to certain uh, you know, bosses and then have it trickle down through, through roll calls. The, the fact that it gets loaded up to Power DMS and uh, has a um, sort of a testing re requirement uh, is is certainly helpful uh, to make sure that we are um, actually getting our money's worth in the sense that people will be using it and at least looking at it. Um, and uh, so for, for those reasons, I, I appreciate it. And, and, and uh, um, I'm glad you brought it back up because I, I do uh, agree that it's important to make sure that our officers are trained on these sorts of things. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Pransky. Yeah, it's I actually what Matt was just asking about was what I was curious about. Is this the total size of the department or the size of the active officers? In other words, if somebody is there to do clerical functions. No, it's, it's, it's active police officers. Just active yes. police. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. And like I said, I brought this up. When this came to light, I saw this as an opportunity. And based on the survey, when we surveyed our officers and they identified that need, you know, I already had my budget planned for 22. That's why I came back with it from the other side of it. So I, I think it warrants a, a, a consideration here. And I wouldn't present it if I didn't. What, what What's their plan for when an officer continues to test out, but fails this, when he's doing their testing out of this, then you, it's the same officers that, you know, they, they get a 20%, I suppose it's the 80% you want them to get when they test out, what's the plan? So typically in those scenarios with any of our training, uh, the remedial training will follow through our chain of command where that officer's direct supervisor will, you know, at, at the very beginning, bring that officer in for remedial training but also if there's an issue with the way the training is being delivered uh, we can also go back and address that with the training company itself if there's an issue uh if the officer is not understanding the way the material is being presented that might be an opportunity for the company to improve as well but uh, that's definitely something that we will address if it, if it does in fact come up so this is something that the offers is this mandatory for correct. them to do correct all right so okay so if it's an officer is like i don't want to do it no, this yeah. is mandatory. Well, this is yeah, part we'll, of your job we'll treat it like every other, like, like every other mandatory yeah. training. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Lieutenant Snyder. And also, Any other question? Commissioner, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt you, sir. Go I ahead. just want to let you know, we can also tweak this and adjust this to something that's pertinent that comes up in a timely manner to a recent event. If there's a mm -hmm. recent incident or something like that, some case law comes out there that's pertinent to, to a current issue, we can, we can uh, talk to Chris, get a training block out to our officers to address that. It's a win-win. I, I see that being giving us the flexibility to address a current issue and put it right out, push it right out to our guys. Okay. Great. Any other questions from commissioners? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the, the approval of uh, uh, item 1D. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're going to move on to item 1E. Thank you, Lieutenant uh, Snyder. Thank you very much. Uh, recommend a board of commissioners approve a blanket purchase order to McDonald Uniform Company, Inc. in the amount of $9,000 for the cost of equipping three new officers with the initial issued department uniforms and duty equipment invoices Attach Any questions from commissioners? Commissioner Zygmunt felt it. I see a finger go up. 
Sorry. No, that wasn't a question, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Rare occurrence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be All on right. the blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> hearing, hearing is seen, then I call for the approval of item 1D. All those in favor of item uh, 1E. I'm sorry. 1E. Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 1F. Recommend the Board of Commission approve a blanket purchase order to Gales LLC in the amount of $45,000 for the annual uniformity equipment requisition. Any questions on this? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Any questions, commissioners? No? Calling for the approval of item 1F. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, great. <laughs> item 1G, consider the recommend consider recommending the Board of Commissioners adopt at his regular scheduled meeting on March 16th. 2022, an ordinance amending Chapter 285, Vehicle and Traffic, Section 285-43, Street and Park Regulations of the Sheltonham Township Code to amend the traffic regulation to add a handicapped parking in front of 722 Butcher Street in Elkins Park. I'm actually going to take, oh, sorry, my screen went blank. I'm going to take item 1G and 1H together. They are both the same. Are there any questions or concern about item 1G and 1H? I just want to correct the location. 7322. 22 Butcher Street. Butcher Street, yes. Butcher Street, that's in Avenue. I'm sorry, Butcher Street. My screen one black. Okay, I'm um, calling for the approval of item 1G and 1H. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, thank you, Chief. We're going to move on now to item two, which is a report from my fire marshal for the month of December 2021. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good evening. Is there any questions on anything submitted uh, from uh, January Fire Board or the December uh, fire reports? Any questions at all in reference to that for our chief? All right, hearing and seeing none. We're gonna move, I'm sorry guys, my screen just went out on me. All right, calling for the approval, uh, the fire marshal's report um, for the month of December, say, 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Scott, you're, you're free to go. <laughs> uh, now we have report from our emergency service director, Mr. Ken Lindahl. Good evening. Uh, Good evening, Ken. Really nothing to add to the EMS report. A um, couple things for emergency management, so nothing for EMS. EMS, okay, we'll move right on to emergency management, and then we'll okay. approve both. Okay. Um, so we um, have successfully begun the township's testing program for those personnel that are not vaccinated. It is going well. Um, everybody is testing weekly as we promised they would. And we're getting no kickback, it's getting done. And I'm happy to report that everybody that's tested is tested negative. Uh, the other thing that is extremely encouraging is I think this is the first time I can give you a report that we have nobody, no employees out with COVID. Wonderful. Great, first, fantastic. That's the first time I can say that in probably six months. Um, we also have gone from seeing um, 10 to 12 COVID patients a week on the ambulance. Um, knock on wood, tomorrow will be six days that I haven't gotten a report. So we might make it a whole week without a COVID patient. So something is working. Um, everyone should have seen the email that we put out on January 26th. It looks like we will stick with those dates. Um, we allowed training to start in the police departments and the fire departments and wherever it's necessary. February 8th, hopefully, the 28th, which is essentially March 1st, we can open the township building again. And if nothing changes, um, by April the 4th, um, all COVID regulations will go away. Um, I'm hopeful after listening to the news tonight that we can push that date up. Um, many places are already doing away with masking and that stuff. So um, we looked at the, that, those were best guess dates. So um, hopefully by next month, I can tell you that we will not speak the word COVID again. 
um, until the fall. Um, but um, so it looks like we made it through and thank you all for your support. It's been, it's been a little trying, but thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I just want to say that you were always there for us and, and thank it you, felt sir. good. And it felt good knowing that you were there. Thank um, you. Your, your, your Facebook posts with a little levity, <laughs> very, very little. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but um, it was just good that you guys were there and um, we're lucky to have you guys. Commissioner Pransky. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hellendahl. Sir. Um, everybody is anxious to get back to a, what used, we used to call a normal life. But my concern is they've already announced the new variant of the Omicron virus, that it's more contagious than the current one, that it's already up to 4.6% of all the reported cases. And is it possible that this choice is a little premature? Um, I don't think so. Um, we are actually a good month behind what most of the people around us did on purpose. I'm not worried about what the neighbor's boy did, but he wants to um, jump off a roof. Right. We, we, we picked these dates um, very conservatively, which is why we're all, all the way out to April the 4th, which means until April the 4th, Everybody will be wearing a mask if they come in the township building, all meetings and, you know, anything that's done in person, social distancing and masking. And the big note at the bottom says all of these dates are pending the continued re reduction of COVID-19 cases. So, um, yes, we heard about the new variant, but what the numbers that we're using are deaths, hospital, hospital people people that are going into the hospital. And um, the third thing we're using is the county's numbers and all three of those are going down. So we will continue to look at it. If that variant grows and becomes an issue, we'll come out with another memo. Because my, my major concern is around the Easter holidays. Um, kids go on spring break, people get together, and sometimes make less than responsible decisions. And I, I just hate us to say, okay, uh, X day, we're all getting together and X day plus five, we're shutting it all down. Um, that, that could absolutely happen. And we have seen this virus take so many turns that I can't deny that. And our decisions made with the manager and Kim and myself are uh, best guess is based on the facts. Now, we haven't stopped looking at stuff. And, um, you know, before tonight, we looked at everything again with these dates out there. Um, and, um, uh, you know, happy to look at it again next month as we do weekly on usually Fridays. Um, and if we need to keep it closed longer. But um, the other thing was that um, we were also, um, there are certain things that the police department, the fire department and EMS have for mandatory training that we made them put off and not do in January. And we were comfortable enough to allow for training and everybody's being respectful with social distancing and masking where possible. But, um, we felt it was time. Now, I, look, Ken, I really appreciate it. Uh, you're trying to grab a fistful of jello, and I, I understand that. Um, and to reiterate what uh, Commissioner Brockington said, we all appreciate everything you do. And it's just that, you know, there's so, it's not your fault. There have been so many expectations. I mean, look, we've had hybrid capabilities at Curtis for what now, Dan, two years almost since we put in this stuff over at Curtis? Mm -hmm. And we still mm -hmm. haven't been able to use it once. <laughs> okay, right. um, so it would be nice to do that. I, you know, I, I just I'm, I'm erring on the side of caution here. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner Prinsky. Um, yes, Commissioner Rappaport. Yes. <laughs> that was a whole handful of fingers in. That wasn't just one. That was just <laughs> I just wasn't sure I was getting seen. Um, I, I want to jump back to item three, um, the medical services. I noticed. Um, there was a report of an unable to locate medical bag in a plea. Was that located? 
Yes. Okay. And the reason I, I would um, be concerned about something like that is because I don't know what's in those bags. No, but if it's controlled substances, you want to no, make no, sure you no, know where no, they those are. are. To be clear, those are the police bags that 10 years ago, rather than have two separate people maintaining first aid supplies, that's bandages and gauzes. And the reason it was, wasn't was able to locate it, the car was on the street. So it, all of those have been located, but um, they have a drop dead deadline to get me the report. And I don't want lies in the report. Okay. That stuff got found next, I think the following week. So Just that's making fine. sure, thank you very much. No, no problem. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Any other questions? I can tell, Ken, are you? Um, the only other more? thing that I wanted to make you aware of, which we think is a really good thing, um, everybody is probably aware of the unfortunate shooting that took place in a synagogue in Texas. Um, and much like after the shooting in Pittsburgh, um, we were contacted by um, AJ asking us if we would um, come in and do a program, and which we've done almost every year. Um, and we decided to do something a little differently. I talked to the chief and we are going to meet with the boards of directors of all of the um, synagogues along York Road and any of the other Jewish institutions that want to get together on uh, the first week or the second week of March. Um, they want to talk about security. They want to talk about us doing programs for each of the individual congregations um, and they want to work with us. And I just, I just want you to know it's, the cooperation is unbelievable. We love it. Um, the chief, I've asked the chief if he'd go with us and he's going as well as a member of the SWAT team who always goes. And um, honestly, part of the reason I bring it up is we do not have, and we have reached out to everyone. We do not have the same relationship or willingness to work with us with the other 36 religious institutions in the township. And we would like to. We have reached out to all of them to do these programs. Um, and if you participate in the church or you know that people do, please give out our number. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty good program. It's run, hide, fight for churches. There have been, unfortunately, too many incidents. Um, the chief's support has been great. It's a combined um, emergency management, police function. And the last time we did it for the synagogues, the average turnout was 75 people per synagogue. So um, that'll be in the April report, but I wanted you to make, to make you aware we had been invited and we're moving forward with that. Hey, Ken, I, yes, I, I want to talk with you because I know I have three religious institutions in my ward. Um, yes, sir. So let's talk. So, because I will try to reach out to them. And love to, love to, love to, because it is not, you know, some of the more recent shootings have been in synagogues, but there have been other shootings in right. other religious institutions. Yeah. And cost them any money and it takes an hour of their time and um officer lambrexa and sergeant griffin one of the two of them we've been doing it for five or six years and it is really well received by the congregation so, okay all right ken let's America. talk because I, I want to get that moving thank you thank you that's all any, I thank you any questions all right so i'm calling for the approval of item um two and uh, item three and item four for, on the agenda for tonight. All those in favor of approving item three and four say aye. 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 Thank you. Any old business for public safety? Commissioner, I do have something on our old business. Yes. Chief? Um, at our last meeting, we spoke about pretrial services at the county, a, a mandate that the county is launching um, up to about a week ago. We thought we had this worked out with some of the logistics uh, with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department agreeing to do transports for us which would have taken care of all my concerns, to be honest with you. Um, you know, my concerns are obviously maintaining public safety as always on the street and any overtime that we may incur, obviously all the same concerns you all have. Um, so unfortunately it backed out on us. Um, the Montgomery County Chiefs of Police are in contact now with the uh, Montgomery County Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Val Rakush as well, 
um, and asking for the county's assistance in what they can do to help uh, not only Cheltenham Township Police Department, but all the surrounding police departments are having the same issue that I am in dealing this in dealing with this unfunded mandate. Um, so I just want to let you know it's, it launches February 14th. We'll be ready for it. We have a plan in place. I'll closely monitor this. We'll closely monitor you know our expenses involved in this and try to come up with a uh, you know a acceptable uh, way of managing this. Um, not only uh, myself, but other departments are in the same boat and everybody's looking to, uh, to try to lessen the impact of this. So I do see this as, as a, uh, a little bit of a bump in the road for us right now until we can get running with it. And then once we're up and running with it, I'd be able to identify even even uh, deep more deeply some of the issues that we might see. Uh, Commissioner Pransky, you have something? Yeah. Uh, was there a specific reason given by the sheriff's office that they were backing out? <laughs> um money they don't have the money for personnel that's what they were that's what we were told uh, you know and their uh, funding source is the county it's, it's not, right right it's the county. I'm, sure I'm with you <laughs> i'm really it this really scuttled our plan i mean this took care of a lot of our issues i, I would think all my issues would have been addressed with this uh, especially not only us other surrounding departments that are on the northern eastern border of the county um you know we do a prison run it takes a significant amount of time we're not we're not in our town we're two minutes away from Eagleville. Um, this is a hike for us, and, it takes, and it's going to impact public safety, I think. So I'm looking for any any help and, and uh, influence that you can provide. To, if you uh, could, if you could send me a note that just summarizes, you know, we thought we had this. They, I'd right. like to forward that up the line in the county and see if we can get somebody to budge. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I can just tell yeah. you, the uh, Montgomery County Chiefs of Police are in the process of putting such a letter together now. I'm wondering if, uh, you know, our board could also perhaps... Uh, I, 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 that that's what I was thinking. It was something should go up from yeah, the board. You know, this not only our issue; it's it's it, police agencies in our in all Montgomery County are dealing with this. Make sure we have the pertinent facts to put in the letter so we can have that. Yeah, we'll certainly do that. Yeah, yeah can you get thing. that over to Bob? Bob, can you make sure that's? Gets I'll work done? with Bob on that. No problem. That's Thank all you. I have, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, um, Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, pertinent to that would be, um, frankly, to to put in some of the hardship issues that are, are unique to Cheltenham. Uh, and I think we can do that effectively in terms of prioritizing the county um, focus to us, not just the distance as uh, Chief said, but um, some of the other, other uh, factors that we've talked about in the past. So we can do that offline, but um, I think those need to be included and discussed. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Any other old business for public safety? All right, we're going to move on to new business. Any new business for public safety? And I will open up Citizen Forum for Public Safety. Leah? Hi, everyone. Um, this is Hi, my Leah. first time here. Welcome. So <laughs> Thanks so much for all your hard work on making our community safe and such a wonderful place to live. Um, I just want to back up some of my um, friends here from the neighborhood and this, this issue of the speeding and the traffic. I live on Greenwood, um, near Greenwood Place, kind of across from Crescent View. And, um, you know, I've been here for about eight years. My son is now 12. And, you know, it was a bit of a shock when we moved in. We came from another city. Um, love, love the community, but the traffic is out of control and has been for, as you all have been talking about for ages. Um, just today, I was walking to the train station and I almost saw another major collision right at Bent Road <laughs> and Greenwood where a car came by the church, which was trying to turn right to go towards the train station. They were moving at a pretty slow speed and somebody else was coming down the hill at probably like, like literally like 70 or 80 and just about like sm slammed into that car. Um, so this happens super regularly. And um, I'm just want to put it out there that um, I don't know, because I haven't been on these meetings for too long, but you know, some stop signs would be fantastic, especially at that other dangerous corner um, where Deaver meets Greenwood at, uh, is it Deaver? no, Barker, Barker meets Greenwood Avenue where the school is up the hill. Um, I think that fence, the whole eight years I've been living here, it must have been smashed in several times at least. So they're careening around that corner too. And um, so I just want to put that out there. And um, 
you know, hope we can, hope we can slow things down on, on, on Greenwood. Honestly, it's just pretty crazy. It's not safe for the kids. That's for sure. Or for any, any of us. Thank you, Leah. That's thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thanks for joining us tonight for the first time. Yeah, Commissioner, Rapp yeah. Time Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, Commissioner just Rappaport. to reiterate for the record, that stretch of Greenwood Avenue from Church Road all the way to Glenside Avenue has no, um, it has a lot of really hairpin type turns Turn. and mm -hmm. has no uh, traffic calming whatsoever. Um, we, we asked for that to be part of the PennDOT study. Okay. We've asked for line of sight uh, at, with the driveways. It's an area where you not only have the elementary school and walkers, you have uh, at least two churches there and uh, several playgrounds and community gardens. You have a huge amount of pedestrian traffic and um, and it just plain is not safe. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to doing something as soon as we can get that PennDOT uh, study. And uh, if that doesn't solve our problems, we still have some work ahead of us. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Brooke, I see your hand up. Hi, I'm here. Hey, Dan. Hi, Hi, Brooke. Hi. Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, so thanks for this. This has been a really wonderful meeting tonight and it's good to hear a little bit of the background of, of what can be done, can't be done, how it can be done in terms of uh, more safety on the roads here in the township. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say, um, kind of piggybacking on Leah's comment was that I was driving um, down Greenwood Avenue from Church Road towards um, Glenside Avenue. And I noticed that there are no speed limit signs on that hill and I was wondering if maybe that was something that the township could actually like post signs along the hill there. Um, I mean, a stop sign would be so ideal, but in the meantime, before we can, you know, get the okay from PennDOT and figure out how to work with them, is that something that could happen with the township? Well, can you repeat that location again? I was yes, writing it down, you said Greenwood? Road, heading north. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically the stretch between Church Road and Barker Road. On Greenwood Avenue, there it's like kind of along where the rabbinical college is, and there are a number of residential homes. Mm -hmm. And I just was driving the other day, and I realized like there's absolutely no speed limit, and it's a hill that goes down, and then it goes around, and I could go on about the raceway that is Greenwood Avenue, <laughs> but I'll leave it there. Did I see? I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Yeah, yes, that's yes, something that we can do. If there are yeah. if there are some mm -hmm. speed limit signs that are missing, uh, the township can absolutely post those. Okay. I will. I'll check on those locations tomorrow and um, touch base with Public Works to make sure they're they're appropriately um, posted. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. No problem. Yes, fantastic. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Irv. See, we can get it done. <laughs> done. <laughs> Thanks for I the laugh. Would, I, I thought you would like that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call for the adjournment. Uh, oh, no, we got another. I'm sorry, I missed. Um, is Greta? Yes, yeah, so uh, I um, believe I was supposed to talk about the trail fest that the EAC is planning, and I see it on the agenda. I don't know if I missed it inadvertently or if it hasn't come up. That's, <laughs> that's public affairs. That's public coming affairs. Soon. Oh, thank that's you. That's coming. That's, that's coming, coming up soon. Yeah, that'll be got coming it. up probably thank about you. a maybe about 11 o'clock tonight. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. I'll try and stay up. <laughs> yeah, stay up late. That's right. That's the late feature tonight. Uh, We're still at the matinee. Um, Teresa. Yeah, just really quick. Thanks uh, to all for hearing us early on. And, um, you know, everyone kind of stepped up. Uh, we organized pretty well to get together this week and uh, follow up with our concerns. Um, so I did have one question about the en uh, traffic engineering firm that's going to be available. Will they have a website open for neighbors comments or concerns so that we have a way of communicating to them? Are they available to us? My 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 take on this, Mr. Chairman, is yes. um, mm -hmm. if you forward these to the 
um, township. You could forward them to myself or to Chief Slavin or both or uh, Commissioner Brockington. Oh, it's in, right. And the only mm -hmm. reason why I say that is sometimes um, in my past experience has been residents have been, you know, asking a lot of questions, getting a lot of information, and we get billed by the hour for that. And then we see a bill for ten thousand dollars. It's like who, who's this? Oh, I see. They're yeah. responding. This way, we will funnel that yeah. to them. Okay, fine. Uh, real quick, uh, someone said yes. This intersection project's going forward. Did I hear that early on? Say that again, Teresa. Uh, did we hear that the intersection project at Greenwood and Church is going forward? Was was that mentioned earlier? Yes, that was that was myself. I am not aware of it being stopped. They are out going to be doing some uh, borings for the road. So the amount of work they're putting into this and identifying issues underground, um, I have not heard anything that this is going to be postponed, delayed, or canceled. The other startup time would be in the spring, as far as we last heard. That would be moving at light speed for them since they haven't, oh. put, it out for, they, they haven't even put it out for bid yet. So my guess yeah. would be a year away from that. Okay. Well, I'm sure you realize that we've been on this topic for three, four years already. Well, um, thank you all for uh, your patience. Thank you, Sergeant Tyler, for hearing me out. And um, Chief Slavin. Uh, we look forward to working with you in the future and look forward to that meeting with the community. Good night. Take care. Thank you, Teresa. I, I think Mika wants to. Yes. She has her hand up. You found your hand. I found my hand. Man, I couldn't find that hand. Sorry about that. Um, hey, I just have one um, final quick question. I'm just wondering about um, enforcement on Greenwood. I haven't really been seeing any, and I'm wondering the possibility of well, more enforcement. That's probably a good thing. Or speeders. Chief? Yes. Um, as you know, we've been, we've been dealing with Greenwood Avenue for a while and trying to come up with some, uh, different ways to attack this problem. I look at this as a multi pronged approach to addressing this issue. I've been trying to use personnel out there, increasing police presence along Greenwood Avenue. I've been trying to use giant signboards to get people to slow down. I've been adding radar signs that flash when people come there to try to wait, uh, raise public awareness of speed in our in our town. I'm trying a multitude of different things. Um, our enforcement has obviously been down due to COVID and several other reasons in the last year, year and a half, two years. Um, uh, it's certainly not what it was in 1990, uh, 2019, excuse me. Um, but um, we're working our way back uh, to a more normal uh, approach to policing now. And part of that is getting out there and doing enforcement actions along Greenwood Avenue and, and throughout the township, basically. Um, traffic is the number one concern in our community. I get it from all angles of our community. I understand from our residents that this is a priority to them when we try to address each issue. I try to do the best with the resources we have to make an impact on this. And I'm continuing to look at different ways to try to address this as we go. So including that end of it as well. Okay, thank you very much. And I would just like um, to just take a, a minute to express my personal thanks um, to all of those working on that horrible night um, of the accident in front of our home. Um, it was something to witness. Um, so thank you for the hard work of you know everybody involved, and thanks thank you. for the meeting. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Mika. Thank you, Irv. All right, yes, Commissioner yeah. Norris. Oh, Commissioner. Oh, Holland. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Real quick, I know you're going to call for adjournment, but I That's just had, okay. a, had a thought, and I wanted to throw this out here and um, and get some feedback from the commissioners on whether you think this is a good idea. Um, so we don't know what we're going to be able to do um, from a signage and, you know, from a traffic calming perspective until we get the report back from PennDOT, you know, and we'll have to digest that and we're going to have meetings and so on and so forth, which is all going to take time, um, but we'll ultimately get to a solution. One of the things that I was just thinking about is I've seen in other communities where, um, you know, they have sort of the, the yard signs, like the real estate signs that go in the grass they say slow down and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I've seen streets where literally every house has two of those signs. And it's basically, it looks like an election day. There's like signs running all the way down the street that say slow down or, or whatever they say, but they're ultimately traffic calming. You know, I'm wondering if 
um, we could get a, you know, given the extent of this, this problem at this intersection, uh, I'm wondering if the commissioners would support getting a, uh, an estimate or a quote on, you know, a certain number of signs, you know, for that area specifically, um, and then, you know, distributing them to the neighbors and allowing them to display them on their personal property, which would not need PennDOT's approval um, and, you know, try to, you know, at least use that as a traffic calming tool because we can control what that looks mm -hmm. like. So I just wanted to throw that. Uh, out I like that idea. And I would like to add to that, that possibly getting a sponsor, maybe to pay for it. Um, a local business might be happy to pay for something like that. Uh, I see Bob, Bob. Uh, oh, oh, Commissioner, well, go ahead, Bob. Well, we are we are receiving a five thousand dollar check here by the end of the week from Blue Cross, uh, Independence Blue Cross, that could could actually pay for this. Okay. You know, and as long as the neighbors are in agreement of putting it on their lawn, you know, everybody might not be, but I I see no issue with that. A great idea, Commissioner Holland. Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, um, about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, the police department received a grant to have those kinds of signs uh, and they were distributed free of charge to the, to the neighbors, anybody who wanted one. Um, I don't know if any of those grants are still available, but I would ask also the police department for, um, you know, if they have any input on that. Certainly, we can look at those opportunities, Commissioner. Absolutely, if there's something available, that would fit that. I mean, sooner, sooner is better. So, I, you know, if if we can't get it this time around, I would say go with whatever we can do the, the quickest. But this, yeah. this is an expenditure we could take out of the asset and forfeiture fund. That, so that would be wanted to. This this is a allowable expense. It's a, it's, a, it's a public safety expense. And just right. just to be just to be clear, um, I was sort of talking about not a township wide initiative yet. Maybe that's something that we do in the future. But I think this area, you know, there's so many issues that I think if we can be very aggressive and very targeted in this area and then measure the impact, um, then maybe, you know, we can look at other areas of the township if if this seems to work. So. You know, I was just specifically focusing, you know, laser focused on this area, um, using it as sort of a test run. And then if things work well, you know, potentially expand. Thank you. Commissioner Armin, I thought I saw you hand up. Well, Commissioner Holland sort of anticipated my, my question or comment that um, <clears throat> I, I would, um, regardless of whether it is uh, successful in calming traffic, um, and, uh, and I hope it would be, um, I would expect that residents in other parts of the township are going to be interested, uh, when they see it in, in the same thing. So we should anticipate, um, requests and, and interest from other parts of the, of the township. And, and perhaps those sorts of things should be, um, uh, sort of funneled through traffic calming or or what have you in, in order to make sure that it is getting fairly uh, distributed. If I could add, this was done about 10, 10, 12 years ago, maybe Commissioner Rappaport, I think. And um, the way it was done then was if, if a resident wanted it, because we put some up, I think we helped out and some residents didn't want it on their front lawn. And so you had to go to the police station and sign for it with your address. I, I don't know if that's the right way to do it. Um, you know, we've gotten good reaction when we've taken the sign boards around and we'll keep doing that. Um, but I, you know, um, we've done it with the chief staff. I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable just putting that on someone's front lawn. So I, I think, we, we need to figure out, I think it's a great idea. I think um, the one advantage, and I'm sort of working back channels to get another sign board uh, we can borrow. Um, the advantage they have is we move them around 
once people have seen the lawn signs, they've seen it a couple of days, but we need to figure out somehow to, some way to give them out to people that want them, not just stick them on front lawns. Yeah, what, what I will do then, um, oh, Bob, if you're gonna look at the money piece, we gotta design yes. it, we gotta get it designed, of course. And then, you know, I, I don't even know if we need to bring this to traffic calming. I would just want to bring this right to the commissioners mm -hmm. so it can move faster. I don't want it to go through another layer yeah. of meetings. Okay. Why, why do that? Mm -hmm. If we can get this done and get it out, mm -hmm. let's not go through another layer of, of meetings. Let's just get it designed, get it paid for, and make it available for our residents. Even if we say pick up from the police station or pick up from the libraries. Irv, we'll, we'll, I'll ask Lauren to start on that uh, tomorrow. And then Ken, Ken's volunteered to, to hand deliver them to every house. So uh, I, I appreciate him doing that. So All right. There you go. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Ken. You can Irv, move. Irv, 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 you can yeah. commissioner, <laughs> commissioner Pransky. You can I'll, use, I'll be, stop me as a mascot. Yeah. I'll be more than happy to walk them door to door, too. I have no problem doing go. that. Commissioner Pransky, did you have? I was saying you, you could use Stoppy as the mascot. Oh, Stoppy. You know that Stop sign that keeps getting <laughs> yeah. smashing. Yeah, he's getting rebuilt now, though. Tom, you had a question? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to uh, let you folks know that we did this two years ago on our own. And I spent $120 on signs that you can see on Church Road. And some of them may have made it over to Greenwood Avenue. But we already started doing this. Of course, you know, if you'd like to reimburse me, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't complain. When, when Bob comes to your door and knocks, you can ask. Okay. Uh, we, <laughs> were, we were on this two Meeting adjourned. Two years ago <laughs> with the uh, yellow signs. Thank you. Brooke, is your hand up again or you never put it down? And my hand's up again. I want to, um, two things. I want to make a suggestion for the signs that might be like, say that it's kind of ch sponsored by Cheltenham. So it's not just like a please slow down sign, um, that it, like a generic one. It might give it a little bit more oomph and impact. Um, and the second thing is, is that for neighbors that live on Greenwood Avenue, I'm volunteering to uh, knock on doors and deliver them to neighbors if need be. I'm yeah, happy to do that. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll get this done. We're gonna kind of leave this here. Uh, Bob's going to take the lead. We're going to all stay on top of that. Commissioner Holland's going to be on top. Since it was his idea, I thought he would be the one that would be giving them out to everyone. I'm a great so. delegator. Aaron, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. <laughs> he doesn't need help, Brooke. He's okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to call for the adjournment of tonight's public safety meeting. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, Ann, it's all yours. Not everyone. Thank you. Okay, good evening again. Uh, now I'll call to order the February 9th meeting of the Public Affairs Committee. We'll go right into item one. Uh, it, if it's okay with everybody, uh, since uh, the Trail Fest uh, issue is awaiting us uh, since uh, an hour and a half ago, uh, why don't we start uh, backwards with 1C? We'll move back. I'm calling on Greta Boone. Hi, thank you. And uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. The EAC <laughs> is planning a trail fest on Tucany Creek Trail on April 24th, which is Earth Day uh, weekend. Uh, the idea is to get people out on the trail, biking and walking. And uh, this is something that we actually had planned for uh, 2020, but it got uh, delayed by two years because of COVID. Um, uh, John Raish is our trail guy on and off the EAC, uh, but he couldn't be here tonight. So if there are questions that I can answer, he certainly will get back to you. Um, and it, one thing that's come up is that uh, John is friends with Officer Sparango, and they uh, and and uh, Officer Sparango has said that the police department is interested in doing a bike rodeo in conjunction with the trail fest. Um, and that would be really fun. And it would be uh, even greater if, it, if uh, the road could be closed. Now we know that it's not a given that uh, Tukaneen Parkway can be closed for the event, but um, we are, we're going to request that. The, we are working on the, an application for the permit. I, I think John and 
uh, the township are going back and forth to get that completed. So that's, that's really all I have to say. Any, um, does anyone have any questions? Could you, repeat, could you repeat the date, please? The 24th, so it's Sunday, uh, April 24th. Is there a rain date? Is there a rain date? Uh, good question, I think it's the following Sunday. Okay, and you'll give us progress reports along the way? Sure. And the purpose, the purpose is right. mostly That's to call right. attention to trails. Why don't you give us a little more of the mission? What your, right. so uh, your objectives, what you're trying to achieve? Right, so call attention to trails, the Tucani Creek Trail in particular, um, get people outside and uh, enjoying our beautiful uh, natural areas. Um, doing some education about not only the environment, but bike safety. And uh, so we, we're, we'll, we're planning on having a, uh, a cleanup as part of it and uh, involving our usual partners like Audubon Wincoat, where uh, we think we'll be able to do a bird walk on the trail. So those kind of things. Great, thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Commissioner, if I just make a quick comment on that, Commissioner. Yes, please. Um, uh, Dave Spranger brought this to my attention last week. As many of you know, we've done a bike rodeo program for years uh, prior to this. This is a no. This is a great fit for that, I believe. Uh, they can do the cleanup. They can they can do all the stuff with the trail, and then we we usually set it up at uh, Elkins Park Middle School. That's where we've had our, our course set up there. Um, I see this as a great uh, way to to uh, join forces and make this a great day. The road closure we do it for Arts in the Park. Uh, arts in the park, excuse me, couldn't say that fast, uh, on Sunday. So it would be the same idea. And it would be for a few hours and we'd open the road back up again. I believe the time frame was in the air between 10 and 1. Is that right, Greta? Yes. Yeah, so it wouldn't be shut down all day. It would be shut down for a short period of time. Do the cleanup, do whatever environmental programs they want to show, and then uh, do the bike uh, inspections. We, we incorporate a whole uh, program into our bike safety rodeo, which includes bike safety inspections, free helmets, we partner with our local community partners like Moss Rehabilitation, the County uh, Health Department. They've come out. We've given out free helmets to kids. We've given out bikes. We've contacted local businesses to uh, be partners in this. So this is a great partnership opportunity. That's how I see it. That's great. I do, too. Great. Uh, if there's no more questions than on that, we'll thank you all for your cooperation and for the initiatives. And uh, we'll move on. Thank you. Um, I. I see Kelly Rebitz here, and uh, uh, why don't we have uh, a little bit of an update on uh, Parks and Rec, because I know um, there have been you know, questions about where are we, are we on target for the, the pools and uh, pickleball and, uh, the, and the concerts. And so if you don't mind, just reassure, <laughs> reassure us that uh, things are uh, on target there. Hi, Ann. Hello, everyone. Hi. So we are on target. We have reached out to our staff from last year for the lifeguards for the pools. And I heard back from a couple. I'm waiting to hear back from more. I'm working on some, you know, like job wanted descriptions to turn into the manager's office for review. So that way we can look for some some additional lifeguards and hopefully we can get some W some water safety instructors or we call them WSI for short. We'd like to offer swim lessons this year as well. Swim team, we're still on schedule for that. Um, concerts, I've been in touch with the concert committee and also with our stage and sound and um, our live stream. So right now I'm waiting to find out more from the committee, like a narrowing down of possible performers we have quite a large list <laughs> and then um working on arbor day because that is coming up before you know it and i've been working with the uh john with the uh trail fest and i'm sorry i'm thinking that you asked something else and i'm missing it but we I'm are pickleball working. <laughs> thank you Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, anybody else from the board have any questions or concerns? I, I do have a question. Hey, Kelly, this year, yes. will the school district be offering lifeguard training? 
since their pools are open. I believe their pools are open. Um, and I know that that was an issue last year where some kids would, could go there and get certified as lifeguards. Do you know if the school district will be having that this year? I was going to reach out to them and ask, but I have also taken it upon myself to ask one of our former staff. Well, I shouldn't say former because he's just a seasonal staff and he can, he can teach um, water safety instructors as well as lifeguards. So if the school is not offering it, I'm hopeful that we can. But if, if he does it, do they, are they considered certified? Yes. It, he runs it through the American Red Cross. Oh, That's okay. why there's fees involved. They okay. will 100% be certified. First aid, okay. lifeguarding, CPR. Okay. At, at our pools or what, what facility would be used? I will try to um, smooth my way into the high school pool. They <laughs> currently, with COVID and everything, they don't really, you know, like sharing the pool right now. But I'm hopeful that they, if they're not offering the lifeguard courses, that they will permit us to. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chell. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, we'll go backwards now to public information uh, with an update on our new website. Uh, Lauren Walter, please. Thank you. Hello. Um, uh, so anyone who went to the website to get the agenda for tonight's meetings noticed that the change has occurred, um, that initial facelift, and I have gotten so far all positive feedback from staff and from some residents and uh, members of different uh, citizen committees. Um, and I encourage anyone on here who has not yet to please give your feedback through the survey. It is the first thing at the top of the page. It's also in the spotlight items. Um, and then that closes on Monday, February 14th. At that point, Municipal One will uh, gather and compile the data and come to us with a plan, hopefully by the end of February, that we can bring back to this committee. Um, the work they estimate to take uh, four to eight weeks uh, once approved, but it just depends on what the final plan is going to look like and how much change that involves. But I think I'm really excited about it. And I think that it's going to look even better once we get uh, the information consolidated and some of those navigational improvements. Um, so I have a question about uh, the deadline for that survey. Um, do you feel that um, enough visitors have really had a crack at uh, exploring to really be able to give uh, the feedback that they want? Have we really given it enough time? Because it'll have been just short of a month. So the survey is uh, more about the old site than it is about the new. There, there's one question that asks whether uh, users like the new look better than the old, but the content and navigation hasn't changed. And so the survey is asking questions about what people are coming to use it for, what information they use most and what features, um, and then some open-ended questions for feedback and for challenges that our residents have faced as well uh, to make sure that those can be addressed in, in the review. So you, you don't think that giving people an extra week makes much difference? Uh, if that is something that the committee uh, is interested in, I will absolutely bring that back to Municipal One. When we had discussed it, they had initially recommended a shorter frame of time, but I asked that it be the Monday after this meeting so that we could give one final push. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that, Lauren. I, the longer we stretch it out, the longer we're going to be waiting to do the updates. And I think if people are interested, they're going to have gone there and made a comment one way or the other. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Other comments or questions? Okay, on, on a slightly different matter, maybe you could address one other question I have on, um, you know, on, on the public information. Um, you know, I, I watch those grids each month about what, what's, uh, what's been done on um, uh, press releases, what goes into Facebook, what goes into Instagram. Do you, and some, sometimes, you know, it makes 
obvious sense. Other times, I wonder what, what goes into your decision, and maybe you could explain why certain things get email notifications versus press releases versus Facebook. But, but the two main ones, are, I'm not sure I understand the reasoning why certain things don't get emailed or into press releases. Um, sure, I'll do my best to address that. And I did take over that grid from our former PIO. Um, I've had moments that I wanted to restyle my reports, but that would be fine. I haven't gotten to, to think through that concept yet uh, to change it over. So I've been uh, moving along with that. But all okay. the press releases uh, are what ends up in the news page on the website on the front page. And I always click them to go out with an email notification. But other topics that you may see with email notification, but without a press release, um, could be such things as calendar events or parks and rec items that are on the calendar because uh, calendars send out email notifications as well. Um, and things like our planning and zoning, the 222 Church Road and the Wawa project, I have them set up to send out an email notification whenever they uh, get updated. And then, Facebook uh, and all of our social media is something that needs quicker attention uh, and is easily shareable by others who are on it. And I know that some of our residents are great about spreading that to the community Facebook pages that we have as well. So if it's something that like a emergency road work that may not be seen on our front page as quickly. And the same with uh, the township phone lines being down this week, as soon as we wanted to get that out, I didn't want to wait for the um, email notifications to be going out. I wanted that on Facebook to be in front of as many people as possible. Um, and actually on that note, back with the website update, Municipal Engage did launch, um, and that is the mass notification system. So we're able to now send out email blasts at any point necessary so in more of an emergency fashion than we currently are with the 5 30 daily uh, notifications and while those will continue i tested out engage this uh, i guess it was monday to let everyone know that the phone systems were down I, that went out to everyone that's currently on the email system but i'm going to be doing press to keep building that and to build our new text message option as well um, i know that i just Finally got to advertise that on Friday and by Monday we had 38 people sign up. So hopefully it's built since then and we gain momentum. Thank you. Uh, one of the things I would mention is that when it came out um, on Monday, um, it was not a familiar, uh, it didn't appear to be sent by a familiar um, sender. So I wonder if people need to be kind of alerted or if it needs to look different from Cheltenham Township rather than uh, something like Municipal Engage. Uh, it, it had a strange look to it that I, I don't know that it will accomplish what we want, but I am really glad that we don't have to wait till 5.30 every day to get important messages out because calendar changes and things like the phone, the phone system being down. Those were things that really did need to come out. And not everybody's on Facebook or looks at Facebook all day long. So yeah, that, that's very helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. I did notice that as well. I think it came through as Cheltenham Engage. I do want to put out the word uh, to add that to mailing lists, but I will um, touch base as well with what that looks like through Municipal One just to to better my understanding, so thank you. And also what they were saying about the signs in the, our last meeting, Cheltenham Engage is not the same thing as Cheltenham Township uh, Outreach or Cheltenham Township um, Message. Something like that is very different from just Engage because it sounds, you know, I, I believe in engagement, but it, it sounds like it could be, you know, a spam rather than an official uh, source. Sure, yeah, we didn't name it, so I'm not sure if that yeah, is, no, is I, static I or if there if we can request it, so I'll find out. Great. Thank you. 
Anybody else? I don't want to hog this. Okay. Um, anything on, on property uh, 1A? All right. I'll take a motion to receive all these reports. So move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item two for public affairs, receipt of the committee meeting minutes. Um, anybody comments? Yes. Madam Chair, just real, just real quick, I want to um, commend the folks from the Economic Development Task Force who um, have uh, been doing these spotlight videos on businesses around the township. They are um, uh, improving in uh, quality and and uh, really spreading out and uh, doing a great job of highlighting our local businesses. So the, uh, the, the hard work that the Economic Development Task Force has been doing on that is, um, is really appreciated. So I just wanted to give them a shout out for that. Need, need a little work on their audio input, but yeah. Getting better. Well, and they are working hard and getting some advice. And uh, I, I agree with you. That was on my list to mention. So thank you. And uh, to the extent that all of us can go on there and like it, uh, uh, it's a YouTube uh, sort of thing. And so it'd be very useful to spread that information. Okay, thank you. Uh, so a motion to receive. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, anything on the staff meeting minutes for January 5th? I'm assuming there weren't other staff meetings during January because of the COVID outages, right? <laughs> okay. Usually there's about two a month. All right, well, I'll just move uh, ex uh, receipt of uh, those minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. New business for public affairs. Madam yes, Chair. Commissioner Armand. Uh, just real quick, we, we touched on it a little earlier in, in uh, Ms. Walter's report, but uh, Mr. Township Manager, can you give us an update on the status of the phones and when, when we think they may be back up and, and, and running? Our hope is that the... Uh, the part splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean today, and they said that it is, they are working on it this evening. So our hope is that tomorrow morning, the phones will be back up. So um, that's that's the latest. And I know I saw Joe O'Neill here not too long ago. So they're waiting to get that part installed. Um, Thank you. A, a question I had asked you about, I know you didn't have time to, to get back to me. Uh, is there an active service contract on the phone system? No. Okay, I guess all the other questions I might have, I'll just forget. <laughs> yes, no, no idea why, but I, well, no, it, it goes back a certain amount of years, and sort of certain amount of things that were established, and we're correcting them, and this is one of the ones I think we'll correct in the future. Yes, thank you. And um, in the meantime, uh, the public can reach the township. Smoke signal. How would you tank. recommend? Uh, just tomorrow. you know, e just go on and email us. That would probably be the best way. That's the best way that we're communicating right now. I know residents have stopped in as well, um, so email, stop in, um, you know, do the best you can with with us on that. Yeah, and as some of us have been forwarding uh, messages. No, I appreciate that. Thank pick you. Pick up our phones. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, old business for public affairs, item 5A, consider recommending, oh, uh, that one's been tabled, right? Correct, correct. Good. Um, item B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution authorizing submission of grant applications under the Pennsylvania State statewide local share account program for the following projects. Placement for the Glenside Avenue Bridge over Shady Nook, Purchase of a new vector and camera trucks. Uh, purchase of three properties for the Glenside Avenue flood control project. Traffic signal update project uh, to be determined. Um, uh, Mr. Township Manager, maybe you want to 
discuss that at all? Like let Allison, since she's so okay. been involved with this, Allison, if you want to take this. Sure. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, so this is a project. I, I noticed that uh, Joe Stuckert is also on this. Um, you can fill in anything that I'm missing. Um, but we uh, were approached by our uh, traffic engineering firm about a local share account uh, grant that usually is kind of focused on um, certain counties in the state, but this is a statewide program that was recently released. Um, and it looks like it's offering grants up to a million dollars with uh, no match um, and doesn't seem to be a limit on how many applications we can place. So we um, did a, you know, a quick discussion on um, Friday to kind of talk about this. And, and these were the ideas that we came up with that seemed to make the, the most sense. Um, it's a very quick turnaround. So we were also kind of what made the most sense and what we can put together quickly in the time allowed. Um, and I noticed, um, Joe, do you wanna kind of talk a little bit about the, uh, the traffic section? Yeah, so just real quick. Um, this is based off of the online gambling in the state. This is the funds that they have uh, raised in the state off online gambling. So that's why it was open to all municipalities the previous grants were only open to municipalities where they had a casino in, in that municipality or that county. So um, that's why this funding is there. Um, this kind of leads back to what we discussed uh, last week regarding Township Line in, in Old York Road. Um, one of the things we looked at and which can benefit us uh, also in the long run is PennDOT would be acceptable to moving the signals to a different platform um, where it could be visible and we could actually see it for the first time. Um, so that would include running a fiber optic line to all those cabinets along um, Old York Road. So that's what we're looking at for that part of the project. Um, kind of going along, if, if we're successful in getting the grant, that may uh, ease PennDOT's dislike of removing the other system at this point. So, um, and it's a large dollar item. We also looked at including in that, we would be able to do uh, possibly adding some cameras for the police to be able to watch uh, some of the more dangerous intersections along Old York Road um, for accident activities or, or you know things like that. Um, so that was all part of what we're looking to do uh, along that Old York Road corridor on the traffic side. Question, Thanks. Madam Chairperson. Yes, Commissioner Sigmund. Um, Allison, are these uh, are these separate uh, separate programs that we're going to be requesting? In other words, we're not aggregating these four. We're actually making four separate grant requests. I'm assuming, correct? That is correct. Yes. Um, <clears throat> do you have a ceiling for? Uh, you said a million dollars. Is a million dollars for each one? There's a million dollars, the aggregated amount that's available for each municipality under this. Um, so each individual application can be up to a million dollars. Uh, I'm not saying that each one of these four will cost us a million dollars. Off the top of my head, unfortunately, I'm having computer tech difficulties. Um, I think the Glenside Avenue bridge project will be close to that number. Uh, the Vactor and camera trucks, I want to say about $750,000, maybe a little more by the time we get around to ordering them. Um, and the Glenside Avenue flood control properties, I believe, are somewhere in the neighborhood of about, uh, I want to say about $700,000. Are, are these, if we uh, submit these, are we prohibited from looking for funds for these kinds of projects from other sources? No, in fact, um, we actually applied for a grant uh, for the bridge project, but we were turned down through the county. Um, and I actually am working on another grant source for the, the properties for the flood control, um, hedging our bets, uh, because it is a little bit of, those are a little bit of a tricky um, project um, to kind of fit into into a grant. So we're, we're 
trying to find as many avenues as we can to to fund some of these projects. Yeah, because we're also looking for money from the the state for the Glenside flood control for a whole lot of other things. So we have to be careful that we don't get into, you know, some kind of bureaucratic, you know, um, I guess minefield that says, well, you already are applying for this, you know, under these grants. So we don't want to, I, I just want to make sure we're, we're careful not to step on our toes um, because as, as some of us have seen with some of the particularly the state bureau, bureaucratic uh, levels that we deal with, you know, if one gets a request, it's like, well, then they're going to close off considering other things. So I'm just, I want to put that up there, make sure that we're not doing these things cross purposes. Yeah. And and if we are successful, and I mean, it would be great if we get every grant we put in, uh, then we can, you know, turn some down too. So we don't sure. have to accept it if we if we do get awarded okay. a grant. Thank you. What is your time frame uh, for these grants? These are due, I believe it's March 15th. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we need to have the resolution. That's why we're, we're running, we, it just got released last week. Um, so, and it's due March 15th and our next board meeting is the 16th. So um, just the timing isn't quite working. <laughs> okay, so um, when would they be uh, reviewing and then letting us know? Um, you know, it's anyone's guess. Uh, it, each funder operates on different timelines and you know some like to push it back until say after an election so they, or before an election it depends on you know or when the money's available um so i'm not really sure when this one how long this would take but usually anywhere from three months to six months for them to review and right. make a decision right. okay uh we'll we'll be looking at a motion in a moment i see a hand up uh mr hislop it's Robert Hislop, 211 Harrison. Thank you. Most of you already know most of this, but I think it's worth saying. Um, the Army Corps project for flood basins was triggered by flooding in 2011. This, I guess, is DEP, Glenside Flood Control Project, even two decades earlier. And particularly since 2011, you know, we had a great outpouring of neighborhoods, very concerned on solving this for 50 years or 100 years. And as I look around tonight, you don't see that, but it is still there, that presence. Um, I could certainly list those neighborhoods from west to east, I won't. Um, both by the even this even this DEP project in Ward One, it's going to affect every neighborhood downstream from Ward One. So after so many years and so much frustration, and really I'm I'm personally far enough removed from this that I don't have to go through it, but I can document it. But people become impatient. They lose focus, but then you know what happens the next time there's a flood and people want it fixed yesterday. Uh, you'll have old blood from 2011. You'll have new blood from resident turnover. But I do want to thank you in particular for these buyouts, which are just going to take a major step out of the way of implementation. And I guess it was maybe for properties related to the Army Corps basins, but I remember noticing several years ago, the township commitment where some of the homeowners were making improvements to their properties only to be bought out for the Army Corps. And the township took the initiative at that time to accelerate those buyouts so that they would be control in control of any property improvements. So this just tells me how committed you are and it's a slow process, um, but I just wanna acknowledge your long-term commitment and I just wanna document that participation. It's, it's unfortunate that you don't have as many people 
watching, but you know, they're, they're coming back. So thank you for that. Thank, thank you for your comments, uh, Commissioner Armin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Mr. Hislop, thank you for your comment. Um, the, the, the board is committed to um, dealing with this issue. In fact, um, uh, the many of us uh, sat with uh, DEP as recently uh, as a few days ago to really um, continue to press this issue and press forward uh, the Glenside flood control project, as, as well as commit to uh, multiple meetings a month with the Army Corps uh, to ensure that that project uh, also continues to um, retain its focus. So um, your acknowledgement is appreciated uh, and, um, uh, and both you and anyone else who is either here tonight or not here tonight should rest assured that we continue to sort of keep the pedal to the metal as best we can, uh, at, uh, understanding some of the bureaucracy that we have to deal with and have been dealing with. But it is something that um, we have a, uh, a keen focus on and are looking to continue to move forward. And it's a, it's a group effort, so thank you. Residents are watching and are appreciative, even if it's not apparent. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, in the interest of time, if there's no other comments, I'll move uh, that we recommend uh, to the formal board um, the resolution authorizing these grant applications. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, any other new, uh, sorry, any other old business for public affairs? Let me mention a couple of things. Um, uh, just just uh, for par parts of information, uh, Cheltenham NAACP held a panel discussion on January 27th on critical race theory, and it was tremendously informative. Uh, it's taped, uh, so if residents uh, or board members want to uh, tune in, uh, there was actually uh, there were a couple of our uh, own uh, local residents uh, there as well as one on the panel. So it was very helpful. Um, but so the NAACP has those tapes if you're interested or can use them for some other purpose. Uh, also for uh, your information, and this kind of goes back to uh, uh, our property maintenance supervisor as well. Um, I recently participated in a panel of of uh, six Cheltenham High School uh, projects for their uh, presentation screen project studies. And um, they were focused on our facilities problems. Um, and you may remember that um, uh, Mr. Brown was also uh, uh, interviewed by the students early on. They, many of them took a tour and uh, for those of you who don't know what problem-based learning is, it is a best practice in education. The relevance to the township, of course, is that what they're doing is using academic skills to solve real world problems. Part of what they do is work with municipalities and other local groups to really address issues that are going on in their community. So again, I wanna thank um, Mr. Brown for his cooperation. Um, and just so that we make the circle a full circle, for your information, the students identified certain needs uh, in the community. And perhaps we should keep these in mind as we go forward. A walkable daycare center, a movie theater, a food arcade, and entertainment for Arcadia students. So I thought you all appreciate that. Any other old business? As far as announcements, number six, anybody with announcements for public affairs? Um, tomorrow night, the Historical Commission has a program in honor of Black History Month. 
Dr. Cheryl Bush will be presenting on patriotism uh, and our shared history um, and is talking about the role of 200,000 colored troops uh, from Cheltenham, uh, from Lamont, basically preserving our democracy. So that starts at 7.30 and it's on Zoom. Anybody else? Citizens Forum for Public Affairs. All right, stay tuned for our finance committee. I'll call for adjournment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.